Hey guys, welcome back. I read 12 books in June and that is the most books I've ever read in a month, ever. Almost by double. I think the most I've ever read before this was seven. So I don't know how I read 12 books. One of them was a DNF, but I'm counting it because I had to suffer through like 40% of that book. I'm counting it as read. I don't know what got into me, but all of a sudden I can't stop reading. I just want to read nonstop. And the thing that I think started it all is this book. The first book I read this month was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is also the best book that I read this month. I gave this five stars. I've talked about this so much already, but here we are again, talking about it again. This is one of my all-time favorite books now. I'll just say, if you haven't read it yet, read it because it's worth it. I know everyone has already talked about this book a million times, but read it. And I love this book. This is one of my prized possessions. I already pre-ordered the second book that's coming out and I don't normally pre-order books cause like I'm, I could just go to the store and get it when it comes out. I was like, it has sprayed edges and only the first print run has sprayed edges. So I need to make sure that I get that. I this book is so good. Next book I read was The Opposite End of the Spectrum, The Shadows Between Us. I gave this two stars. I think I originally gave it like two and a half or something and I was just like, no. Sometimes I need to marinate on my decisions and this was one of those. I didn't really like this. It just felt so weird. It was like weirdly dragged out, but then all of like the plot twists or like big events that happened in this book, like they happened so quickly and then were just moved past and brushed aside and I just was like, what the f what? What is happening? Like there's one part of this book where there's like a mystery thing that they try to find out who is who is doing this bad thing. They just randomly fucking find out. And then it's just like, oh, nothing past, nothing past that, that didn't matter. It, I don't know, this book was weird. I didn't like, um, read it if you want, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't honestly. I read a lot of books on my Kindle. Actually, I think it was half and a half. I read six physical books and six, well, I guess five books on my Kindle and then one audiobook. The next book I read was A Not So Me Cute by Megan Quinn. And I read this on my Kindle. This book was really good. I liked it a lot. I gave it four and a half out of five. I've never laughed so hard in a book in my life. This book was funny and I liked it a lot. Their banter was good. It was just cute. I love a like, nice little billionaire romance. Who doesn't? Also, it's fake dating. I love fake dating. Then I read Flawless by Elsie Silver, which is the first book in the me? In the Chestnut Spring series. I give this book a three out of five. It was good. I think just there I don't know how I feel about this book. Like, it was fine. It was all right. I didn't get the hype with this series on the first book. I will say I read the second book and liked it better, but the first book was not my favorite. The amount of times they say the word masculine made my brain melt, actually. It was painful. The way this book was very, like, cheesy and it felt forced to me. So, I was the biggest fan of it. They were cute, I guess. I didn't like the, the conflict either, like, the third act conflict or breakup or whatever so three stars i just lost my place on goodreads love in other words by christina lauren i've already talked about this book too i look fucking weird right now love this book so much five stars i don't know why it took me so long to read this book this should have been the first christina lauren book that i read i read on honeymooners first and that was good but this is like top favorite like so good top favorite romance book ever elliot and macy were so cute it's childhood friends to lovers actually it's childhood friends to strangers to lovers because something happens when they are young and they don't talk for 11 years and you have to figure out why and honestly normally i'm not the biggest fan of like 10 plus year gap between like speaking again that they do in movies i'm not the hugest fan of that because it like makes me mad because it's all about a miscommunication i'm like why are you wasting time of your life not being with this person all because of a miscommunication. I know that the movie Love Rosie is like that. I, it, it's like good, but it's just like, why are you doing this? It just makes me like angry. But this was good. Like this did it well. It was painful. It hurt. I highly recommend this book. If you haven't read it yet, read it. It's so fucking good. I need, I'm gonna read it again. I need to read it again eventually. They also did the like back and forth of the time. Cause it's like each chapter is like now and then then, which is like in their childhood. And it, I, they did such a good job writing that. It was so well written. I didn't feel taken out of the story at all. And sometimes I do feel like that when the time jump books. Is that what it's called? I don't know what the word is for that. Anyways, moving on. I next read Shatter Me. This is a series I've been wanting to read for a very long time. Everyone talks about this series. Everyone loves this series. It's a dystopian series. I think there's a lot of books. I don't even know how many there are. I gave this three stars. It was not bad. It was just like a mediocre start. Like it was just a start to a series where it's like 
it was fine but it was like not a lot was happening i don't know i feel like the next books will get better it was a decent start to a series basically she like can't touch people or she'll kill them she's in like this dystopian world she's figuring shit out honestly the main character juliet being inside of her brain and like reading her thoughts is a lot and i know it gets better like as the story progresses but in this shit i'm in the middle of the second book i kind of put it down but like being in her mind is excruciatingly painful. I don't know how I, ugh. but it's still good. She's just got a lot going on up here and it's, it's, um, yeah. Then I read the novella that comes after the first book, which is Destroy Me. I gave this, what did I give this? I gave it three and a half. I feel like 3.25, but like, I don't want to be that person, but I will. It was definitely better than the first. It was basically what happened at the end of the first book. It was like, it was Warner's point of view, like the guy's point of view, which I really liked better because it got me out of Juliet's mind and I needed to get out of her mind. And it also shows you more of like what is going on. It makes a lot of things more understandable. There's two guys in this book, Adam and Warner. And Adam honestly is just giving stale, generic white bread. So I'm not a huge fan. But then Warner is like, he's just giving creep. So I was like, what's going on here? Like I'm confused. I was just genuinely confused. And this I'm still confused, but it made things make a little more sense. And while Warner is still creepy a little, it was nice to see his point of view and what the hell is going on. I read Three Swedish Mountain Men by Lily Gold. I love Lily Gold. I read uh, Faking with Benefits a while ago, maybe like a year ago. That book was fucking good. I think I gave it like four and a half, or four or four and a half out of five. I love a reverse harem, okay? I don't know what to tell you. It's fun it's fun and i i enjoy it so i read three swedish mountain men and i gave it four stars it was cute it was good i don't know man like who doesn't want to go to sweden and like end up being stormed in a cabin with three very hot swedish men and also the i enjoyed the conflict it was something that didn't make me want to punch someone so that was good yeah it was spicy and fun she's written the best reverse harems i've read i only i don't think i've read a lot honestly i think i've read like a few four stars then i read heartless also by elsie silver second book in the chestnut springs series and this one was better than the first book i gave it 3.75 i uh, uh, i don't know it just <laughs> i honestly i was gonna give it a four but then the ending happened and i don't like that trope at all if that trope could stay out of books forever i would thank everyone in the world i would be very happy but unfortunately that trope exists and i had to read it everything up to that point though was fun i was having a good time it was entertaining it was great Cade is great love him uh willa is great i don't like what fucking happened at the end though that should piss me off and they there's a scene of like people getting sick and it was thrown in there just for this and it makes me like oh uh, i didn't need to read that i didn't want to read that the epilogue literally made me mad <sighs> like add some add some fucking uniqueness anyway it was good i'm just mad about the ending because why do we have to go there after everything we went through why did we have to go there why was that necessary we could have waited the next one i read well i didn't even read all of it is right man right time by megan quinn I read this because i really liked it not so meet cute and i was like let me see what else she has. I DNF this. It was really not good. I don't know if I've ever wanted to DNF a book so quickly. I think it was within like the, f it was at maybe like 10%. 10 or 15% I was like, okay, like no. And it was when they, so it's kind of like fake dating. It is fake dating. I don't know why I said it's kind of like, it is fake dating. Something happens and I was like, okay, this could be good. And then when they sit down at the bar to chat for the first time, I don't remember these people's names. Anyways, the girl main character is so weird. Like the things that she says, I feel like you wouldn't say to someone you just met. It just was so fucking weird. I couldn't get over it. And then the dude was fucking weird. She was just crossing so many boundaries and acting so immature. Like when you first meet someone, you're not going to be like, like how many times do you masturbate a week? How many people do you sleep with? Like, what do you, you do? You said one word to this person. And there's one point where she meets one of his friend's wives. She just sits down with her and is like, do you guys get each other off? And she's like, what kinks do you have? How do you get each other off? I'm like, girl, 
relax you cannot just go asking like some people don't feel comfortable talking about those things why are you being I, I don't know I didn't like that it felt so weird and I felt so uncomfortable and I wanted to DNF it at like 10% but I tried to push through and that like 35% I was like all right because something weird happens with his ex that like cheated on it. it was so fucking weird dude I don't know what the hell was in this book or what was going on but I genuinely did not like it majority of the time when it's a one-star book for me I don't even like rate it cuz I'm like I feel bad and I don't really have a lot that are like one stars even if I DNF a book I think I've DNF like two books I won't rate it I don't know why I just don't like giving books one stars I don't like it it makes me feel bad I gave this book a one star how does this have a four to each their own. Also, it was age gap, which I don't mind age gaps, but like they were not anywhere near the same level mentally at all. It, there was no connection between them. There was no chemistry, no anything. That was sad because it's a hockey romance and I was excited for that, but it's okay. I did a little 24 hour, I tried to do a little 24 hour readathon to struggle a little. I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I was so excited for this book to come out. This is one of the authors that I will buy anything that they write. Love her. Love Hypothesis was great. Love on the Brain was great. And then I read this. There's a fucking sticker on it and this was really good i give it four stars fake dating no she's fake dating his brother it's like rival rivals rivals to lovers i don't know rival i i don't know what i'm talking about there was a little bit of a pop plot twist in the beginning that i wasn't expecting i didn't put two and two together at all i loved the brother he was so cute the main character in this is going through shit and honestly i felt like i related to her a lot with what she was going through. I felt realistic, I liked it. The guy character though, honestly, I liked him, but he, he kind of didn't have a whole lot of personality. He kind of was just there. I really liked their relationship. I annotated this book and I liked a lot of the things he was saying. I liked the Adam and Olive cameo so much. I, I tabbed that in blue so I could like remember and go back. That shit was so good, I was so happy about that. And it was long, I was expecting it to be like two seconds and it was like kind of long. There were so many parts in this where I was like, oh, this is so cute. And I love when the guy falls first and I love when the guy falls harder. That is one of my favorite things ever. I don't wanna see the girl fall first, I don't wanna see that. Let the man fall first and let him fall hard. Let him hit that fucking ground. The attraction was there, the chemistry was there. The fact that like, she was with his brother first but like they were fake dating and he thought they were real dating and he was like uh you know that shit got me it, i feel like it's more than a four but like i feel like the guy character i don't know he was saying the right things but he just didn't have a lot of personality for me wait i need to take a picture this is fucking cool i just oh my god there's so many parts in here that were just so cute honestly though he was just there for her you know what now that i think about it, it is giving very much barbie and ken he is very much ken he is ken so i'm you know it's not that bad maybe that he didn't have a lot of personality now I'm rethinking this. He was helping her out and doing things for her and saying things that she needed to hear. So what if he didn't have a personality? He is Ken. I don't know, think about this before. Now I love them more. Oh my gosh. This whole fucking paragraph on page 377? And then the last book of the month that I read was The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. I listened to this on, I listened to this as an audiobook. I'm giving it a 3.75. I wish Goodreads had like half ratings it was good it was interesting i kind of figured out kind of what was going on like a little bit like, but i didn't fully know what was gonna happen the ending was a little bit cheesy i wasn't like super on the edge of my seat but like once things started coming out i was like oh oh shit oh fuck oh damn i think it was my first thriller i've read besides verity also the narration was throwing me off i don't know the accent just threw me off so much like i know she, the girl has an accent but it would it felt like it wasn't con like I, maybe it was consistent but sometimes it would be strong and i was like damn fuck she had an accent bought the boston accent i'm pretty sure it was boston would just smack you in the face all of a sudden anyways those are all the books i read in june i almost said february what the hell it's literally the most books i've ever read in a month and i'm so excited about it literally i'm almost at my goal now my goal was originally 50 books for the year the beginning of the year i was struggling so i changed it from 50 to 25 and i'm at 23 books that shows you how many little how little books i read at the beginning of the year because i read 12 this month and i'm only at 23 books for the year i'm almost at my goal now so that's cool. That's all the books I read. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know which your favorite book was that you read in June and we can chat about it. That's it. Love you guys.
Bye. I can't believe I read so many books.